Good morning, good afternoon. If I can have you guys, uh, let's just start off with a quick prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, you know, we open our hearts to you. We open our minds and we open up our soul to you, Lord. Lord, today I thank you that you are all here, Lord, to be able to dwell in your kingdom and to be able to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us together, Lord, and thank you for being able to just glorify your name. Lord, please lead us in this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Your God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? And what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Then if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God.
We just want to give you all the honor and all the glory to you, Lord. Lord, uh, may you just bless each and every one of us, Lord, who's here, who's streaming, who's just hearing your word, Lord. Lord, may your hand protect them and be with us all. Lord, thank you for everything. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Again, welcome to our worship service, and it's an opportunity for me to uh, introduce our speaker for today. He's our guest speaker, and uh, he's a well-known friend of our senior pastor. Our speaker for today is Dr. Henry Tan, and uh, he brings 38 years of experience as, as an executive leader 
and as a president of the International Leadership Consortium, a group of universities located in Africa, Philippines, and Singapore with express purpose of developing leaders for transformational impact. In fact, he has been serving with CRU or the former Campus Crusade of Christ for more than four decades, and he has served in top leadership position with CRU in the Philippines, Indonesia, Taiwan, India, and other parts of Latin America and Europe. He has a BS in chemistry with the University of Malaysia. He holds a master's degree in business management from Asia Institute of Management and a doctorate of educational leadership from the University of San Diego. He's married to Wilma Manongdo with three grown children and nine grandchildren, and currently he resides in San Diego, California. Church, it is my privilege to present to you our speaker for today, Dr. Henry Tan. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you. I want to thank Pastor Kaloy for his invitation to be with you today. And I am looking forward to our time together. I've known Pastor Kaloy for a long time now. In fact, when he was still a student in UP. Through the years, we've kept touch. And when we were in the Philippines together, we were meeting with Bishop F, the three of us, who meet as an accountability mentoring group. And uh, it's such a rich time that we have. And we continue to want to help one another be everything that God wants us to be. So I'm thrilled to be here. He's asked me to take a look at uh, Psalm 63, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Let me start by praying. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time. I pray that you would guide us and direct us and give me your thoughts, your mind, and that you would not let me stand in your way to get your message across. And so, Father, I want to commit this time to you and ask that you use it for your honor, for your glory. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Many years ago, I attended a school called Outward Bound School. It's a school where you learn how to survive in, on land and sea, in the, uh, the jungles. And it was a time where People come together from all walks of life and they get divided into teams of 10. And so when you're in, once you're in the team, everybody is equal. You may be a CEO, you may be a doctor, you may be a dentist, you may be a teacher, you may be a student, but we are all equal. And we learn how to work together as a team, how to survive, and to make sure that we complete our tasks, everyone must complete it. If anyone in your team does not complete it, your team does not complete it. And so we are, our job was always to help make sure that our slowest person gets to finish because when he finishes, all of us finish. So I remember the time when we were at our last day of the 25 day training and we had to finish a 30 mile hike. There was a culminating uh, event for all of us. It was a, all they need to do for us, all, they, all that we needed to do was to follow a map. They say, you're here on a map. I want for you to move there. And it's 30 miles away, no roads necessarily. And you got to walk through the jungles and pave the way yourself. We started at 4 a.m. and we started walking. By the time 10, 11 o'clock came, it was already hot. And this was in Malaysia, so it was very, very hot. And so people were getting thirsty. Our slowest guy was the biggest guy. And he had blisters on his lips because it was so, so hot and dry. And so all of us gave our water bottles to him so that he could make sure that he can survive and finish the race. 
By the time we got to about 12 o'clock, we had run out of water. And we're just almost finishing, but we run out of water. And many were beginning to be thirsty. We learn one thing very quickly. <clears throat> thirsty people do not discriminate. We drink anything we can get our hands on. Dirty water, muddy water, whatever. After all, we had tablets to supposedly put it in and just clean it up for us. I remember how we would drink water that you would not even consider potable. But we did because we were thirsty. What would you do if you found yourself in a waterless desert with miles and miles of sand and no sight of water? Our talk today, I've titled it Satisfying your thirst in a waterless desert, Psalm 63. David was in such a predicament when he wrote Psalm 63. He was in the wilderness of Judah. The time was during Absalom's rebellion when David was shut off from the tabernacle. It was a most trying time when all seemed to be going against David and he could not meet God in public worship. David's expressions of his feelings and his needs, as we see here in Psalm 63, are good encouragement for God's people in all ages. David in the wilderness was much like us during this COVID season. How many of you have an idea of what you want to do when you are given the freedom to live life as you would before. You know, as you look at many things you may want to do, to be able to go out, eat in some restaurant, where you don't have to out, eat out in the parking lot, or take it home, or you want to go to see a movie, visit a friend, visit family members. You know, it was... It is like parched land right now, like this picture shows. It seems like no water in sight. David, as he was looking around him, was longing for something. You know what he was longing for? He was longing to be with God. And I trust that this is something that we all can come to think about. That when you have the freedom to be going around, that our thoughts will be, how can we focus on God in this reclaimed freedom, so to speak? The Psalm 63, let me read it to you. It's just 11 verses. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in a sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the riches of foods, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. So I want for us to take a look and see the verbs that he uses. He says, you God are my God, so earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory, so I will glorify you. I will praise you. I will lift up my hands and praise you. This is an amazing thing to see how as he is, even in this desert, when his mind is focused on God, his heart sings. This is, to me, is, a, is quite an amazing thing. Because sometimes I look at myself and say, when I look at everything that's desolate and really dry, and I don't think I burst out in song. And so this is uh, very convicting 
for me as I looked at this. Continuing on, it says, On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. So the first thing we learn is that deep down our hearts long and thirst for God. Do you have a thirst for God? How do you see God? Is he a big God or a small God to you? Because how big he is to you is how you will live. How small he is to you, that's how you will live too. So when David says, Oh God, thou art my God, he's addressing this God that is so big for him. That this God is the one that created the universe and yet cares for you and me. We must own his authority over us and propriety in us and our relationship to him. Is he your God? Because if he is your God, then he is the one in authority over us and over you. Thou art my God, mine by creation, because he created me, and therefore my rightful owner and ruler, mine by covenant and by my own consent. I choose to let him rule over me. This is the God that David was looking at. And he says, Oh God, thou art my God. And as he thinks about this, he's really saying, I, because you are my God, if you are truly my God, then I will seek after you. I will seek after you. Seeking <coughs> is uh, something we do. Sometimes we do it less with less intensity than others. I, I think of uh, playing hide and seek with my grandchildren. I have three children, all married, and nine grandchildren. So it's a joy to be with them. So when we play hide and seek, I try to look for them, and I will not give up until I find them. For them, sometimes they walk around, try to look for me, and then they give up. But if we think about God, who actually is not hiding from us, but us have our eyes kind of hidden from God, we need to seek after Him. We need to seek after Him. Because deep down in our hearts, we long for and thirst for God. See, David is a man whom God said, is a man after mine own heart. David, who had seen God explode his power in the defeat of Israel's enemies and in defense of the ark of God. David, who had witnessed God's glory fill the tabernacle. This David, has now been driven from his throne, from his country, and is separated from the sanctuary in which he loved to worship. Now David cries out, My soul thirsts for thee. Or oh, in another translation, Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. This is like, the for me, it's trying to figure out, well, how do you picture thirst? So one day there was a disciple of uh, Aristotle who was walking on the shore and uh, this guy was 
coming to Aristotle and saying, I want to be your disciple. Can you take me as a disciple? So Aristotle walked into the sea and he kept walking. The boy followed and he went on and the boy kept on asking this question of him. Suddenly, Aristotle turned around and asked him one more time, do you really want me to be your teacher, to disciple you? He said, yes. Then all of a sudden, Aristotle took his head, pushed him under the water, and held him there. Seems like a long time. Finally, as Aristotle let go of the pressure, the guy burst out and was gasping for air. Aristotle said, you can be my student, my disciple, if you desire, if you long for, if you thirst for this as much as that first gasp of air when you get up. How are we? Are we like that? See, right now, we are all locked down. It's almost like being denied going to church, even. It's a little different from his time because God was residing in the tabernacle and David wanted to get back there to fellowship with God, to meet with God. We in the New Testament are now the tabernacle of God. So we can go to God directly, even though we are locked down. However, the Bible tells us that not to forsake the gathering of ourselves together, that we need fellowship with one another. So this is happening right now because of COVID. So I want to ask, how deep is your longing? How great is your thirst for God? If God is everything to us, shouldn't we be thirsting for Him? So as we look at this then, we see that we need to seek God. And one for us to make a point of difference. We need to seek God and not just His blessings. Many times in our lives, we are content to just ask God for His blessings. And sometimes we may receive blessings and miss the blesser. We can be involved in godly things and miss God. We can pray and not be dependent on God because we can mouth words and not be dependent on God because prayer is just expression of your dependence on God. And so the whole thing for us is that, what are we doing? Is God truly God? Like David says, oh God, you are my God. You are the God who sees us through everything that we go through. You are the God that we can submit to because you are able to take us through any circumstance, any conflict, any situation in life, because you are able. Is this your God? What are you seeking apart from God? Psalm 63 says we are thirsty, right? He draws a picture of himself as a thirsty man in a waterless land, the land of arid mountains without a blade of grass, Blazing in whiteness under the fierce sunshine. No pools of water, no sweet sound of running waters, no shadow, no songs from birds, but all is hot and dusty. And men and beasts faint and die for want of water. We are thirsty men in a waterless land. And today, as you look around us in America, particularly, where God is being driven out from everywhere. Prayer has driven out of school. This is getting to be a waterless land. 
Remember that a man is but a bundle of appetites, desires, often painful, always active. But the misery of it is this, is that he sometimes does not know what it is that he wants. That he thirsts, but does not understand what the thirst means, nor what it is that will slake it. See, man can go through life thirsting without knowing what exactly he's thirsting for. Therefore, he goes around looking for things, people to fill that thirst in his life. But the thirst in his life is like a God-shaped vacuum in his heart that cannot be filled by any created thing but by God himself in the form of Jesus Christ. And so when we look at that, we are conscious of our craving, but do not know what will satisfy. So we chase after things and people instead of God. And you see that. And sometimes even as Christians, we forget. And we do that too. See, there's a great deal more in Christianity than longing. But there's no Christianity worth the name without it. Sometimes we focus on a pattern of conduct without realizing that there is a need for God and for more of God in us. You know, sometimes we feel dry and you wonder how come we are dry. It's not that God has left because he said, I will never ever leave you nor forsake you since he came into your life. It is us who have left him. That's when we become dry. See, there has to be the clear recognition of what is for our good. For us to recognize of the all-sufficiency of our Lord and lover of our souls, and not to go after things of this world that bring only transient and partial satisfaction. A man who lets all his longings go unchecked of the worldly good has none left towards heaven, towards God. If you break up a river into a multitude of channels and let many channels irrigate many little gardens, there will be no force in its current. Its bed will become dry. It will never reach the great ocean where it loses its individuality and becomes part of a mightier whole. In the same way, we must not divide up our desires, but instead focus our desire on Him who is able to satisfy God. So we are thirsty. We long after Him. Deep down, that's what we have, this longing. And since we know who we long for, can we go after that ourselves? You see, the soul that thirsts after God is satisfied. We are satisfied in Christ. One aspect of God's love is his infinite desire to give himself. This is God. God's love is such that he wants to give himself. And he demonstrated so clearly when he went to the cross in our place. But he wants to pour himself into us. If only we open our hearts through our longing, through our seeking, he will pour in as surely as the sun rises and sets each day. You see, when you are thirsting after God and you seek God, he tells us, seek and you will find. See, the soul that thirsts after God is satisfied you my soul thirst for God my soul will only be satisfied when I get him and so when you look at this here we find that for us it's like sometimes we don't feel very thirsty have you ever felt that sometimes that you you don't feel like you need to read the Bible after all you know it already I have been a Christian for many years but some who just come to know Christ, they're excited. They want to read more. And we know that as we read more, we learn more. The more we learn, the more we know we don't know. 
And so as we begin to read the Bible, we find out more and more about God because there's so much of him to know. All his virtues, all his character that we need to know so that we can learn to be secure in his character as we learn to see our identity in him. See, we are his. Our identity is in him, not in what other people think of us. It is what he thinks of us. And you know, he thinks of us so highly that he went to the cross for us. And now, no matter what we are doing, he is ever present. He loves us. He picks us up when we fall down. He is the one that is ever ready to take us to wherever our hearts are willing to go. You see, it is us that can be the problem. And as we look at this psalm, we see David saying very clearly, be clear about your craving. Who is it? that you're looking for. And he tells us it is God himself. See, satisfaction in God leads us to worship him. He tells us, right? I will glorify you. I will praise you. I will lift up my hands. I will sing praises to you. As you look at all of this, we find that we need to come before the cross and worship him because we have found our rest in him. We are satisfied that He is our God. See, our lives should be one where we are constantly seeking Him because there's more and more of Him to know. And as we know Him, we, our hearts, are at peace with Him. And as we are at peace with Him, He fills our heart with worship, with praise giving him the worth he desires. And so as we look at this now, we say that because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. God desires us to worship him, to recognize his worth. He is a trustworthy God. And if you look through your lives and you were to trace out your life, you will find the ups and downs in life that you have experienced. And at every point, both the high point and low point, God is there. In fact, we learn the most during our low points. And he says, as you begin to see who he is, this loving God, who is sovereignly in control of every situation that you go through, has your best interests at heart. This is the God that we know. This is the God that we worship. I will be fully satisfied. As a result of seeing his love is better than life, David is fully satisfied as with the richest food. Now, we all know satisfaction of eating food, right? You know, with lockdowns, we've not been able to go out to restaurants, right, because they are closed. But I am so blessed. I feel like I'm eating better at home than going to the, to the restaurants. You know, and I, I just am so satisfied. You know, when you are satisfied, it's like, man, this is great. And as you have received goodness from God, whether it's a meal, whether it's a good book, whatever, you want to tell others about this. And so David, as he's writing all this, he's writing so we can know how he feels. So we can know that even though he was thirsty, he can find his thirst quench only by God. And so as we have become satisfied with God, notice is not satisfied and then stop. The idea is to be satisfied continuously so that it is a journey with God. 
that as we come to Him daily, we can be satisfied so that we can be satisfied to be growing. So don't be looking at it as a stop, that you have a stopping point, but rather is a point that you want to keep on repeating and growing from. I will be fully satisfied. Now I can still think of great meals that we have had. And uh, I just praise God. It's such a, such a joy. And God wants us to be joyful. See, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. You know, when you look around, there are some people you know that are always complaining. They are whiners. No matter how good the situation is, there's something bad that they need to make a comment on. When people do that, we know that God is not really glorified because in some ways they're saying, God, you messed up. That's why I'm in this situation. See, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. This is from John Piper. Thirdly, we find satisfaction in Jesus leads to clinging to Him more. It's not, I've, I've reached the end. No, no, no. Satisfaction is just a point to allow us to be able to cling to Him even more. See, the essence of faith is being satisfied with all that God is for us in Jesus. That we are to be satisfied with all that God is for us in Jesus. Jesus the creator of the universe, somehow was willing to become a man. Somehow, he became one who chose to live in our hearts. I, I cannot fully fathom that, but that's how much God loves us. And we all know that if we know that people, that someone loves us, we can go far with that person. We can overlook mannerisms on the externals, but when we see the heart, there's a heart that loves us. We can trust the person. We can go forth with him to do anything. And same thing, if we are satisfied in Jesus, we are saying we recognize his love for us, his care for us, he wants only the best for us. So therefore, we come alongside and cling to Him and that we will not have to fear anything. In First John, it tells us, the reason we fear is because we do not fully comprehend how much God really loves us. Because if we do, wouldn't you like to trust Him? Because He loves you and cares for you. So as we look at the satisfaction in Jesus leads to clinging to Him more, it means giving Him more and more of our hearts. That's what it means. The man who follows after other good than God has at the end to say, I am sick, tired of it, has lost all power to draw me, or he has to say, I ravenously long for more of it, and I cannot get any more. He that loves silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loves abundance with increase. You see, you have to increase the dose of the narcotic. And as you increase the dose, it loses its power. And the less you can do without it, the less it does for you. Now, I know this, right? I have many surgeries in my life. I have my back fused. And I know in recovering, I had to take pain medication. And... The more I take of it, it loses its power. I got to take more. And I know the biggest concern was, hey, will I get addicted to this thing? And so when you begin looking at this, sometimes we look for stuff that becomes very addictive to us to the point where you got to have more to get the same effect in you. But to drink into the one God slakes all thirst. If we drink into God, from God, He will quench all thirst. And because He is infinite and our capacity for receiving Him, 
can be indefinitely expanded. We want to learn to take in more of Him. But really, when we say that, you know, you think about it, when you receive Christ, you did not receive 50% of Christ, you receive all of Him, all of God. So then we cannot really have more of Him. The only thing we need to think about is, how can He have more of us? Because that's the way to open the door for His power to be seen in our lives. The more we have of God, the more we long for Him. And the more we long for Him, the more we possess Him. See, our challenge is, is allowing Him to fully live out His life in us. To do so would mean giving more of our hearts to Him and allowing Him to be the president of our lives, not just a resident in our lives. And so as we get to be satisfied with Him, we want to cling to Him, we want to stay close to Him. You know, I, you have, I'm sure in your life you have some, some people that you somehow want to stay close to. There was something about that person that you want to be near. And as you think about it, there's probably certain things that you like very much that you want to be near to learn more from. As we think about him living our lives as the president, can we come near to learn from him more? He has so much to teach us. So, so very much. You see, it's not my, how much of God we have in our lives, but rather how much of our hearts does God have. I'm just summarizing that point. So as we think about this whole story of David in the desert, recognize that we also live in desert-like places. And the only way for us to quench our thirst is to seek after, long after God himself. Because he is the one who cares for us and loves us. And my prayer is that you and I will continue to fix our eyes on Jesus because he is the perfecter of, of our faith. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And so as we live out this period under COVID, may God bless you so that you will seek after him daily, moment by moment, allowing the Holy Spirit to be in control of our lives. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for today. Thank you for David. Thank you for his focus on you, our God, that you are a big God to him. And I pray that as we look at you, may we see you bigger and bigger than who we see right now, because we know that sometimes we limit you by the way we look at you. So teach us to live lives where we will not be the limiter of you at work in our lives, that we be free to open our hearts, to give you our hearts more, so that you can freely live out your life and make us the persons you want us to be. So Lord Jesus, I thank you. Thank you that we can trust you with our lives. We may be going through difficult times in this country, but we can look to you because you satisfy in any circumstances. So I want to praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen.
every tribe and tongue lift your voice as one he is great to be praised sing to the Lord oh my soul let the heavens shine Well, good afternoon, church, for those who are worshiping uh, with us on site, and good morning for those who are watching our live streaming. Again, today is first Sunday. It is really uh, great to worship the Lord, and what a great sermon, what a great preaching. It is an awesome truth that we can only find satisfaction in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only Christ who can really satisfy our longing and thirst for God. And of course, he also, Dr. Henry Tan also said that the more we are satisfied with Christ, 
the more God will be glorified. So I hope and I pray that we will fix our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is really the author and perfecter of our faith. Truly, He is only the one who can satisfy us for our longing uh, for God. And before we end our service, I have a couple of announcements that uh, I'd like to uh, give to you. Uh, First, today is first Sunday of the month, which means it is also the Lord's Supper Day or Communion Sunday. We always do our Lord's Supper every uh, first Sunday of the month. So uh, we will do our communion after the service and... uh, and uh, we will do it by a Zoom. So we will do it together as a family of Christ, and we will, we will be together. So it will be around 10, 15 hours after our worship service. And of course, I have a, a, a couple of announcements also uh, for our Holy Week schedule. Remember, it's already the month of March, and in just a couple of weeks, we will be celebrating the Holy Week. And so let us be reminded of the following activities uh, for CICC, number one, we will have our Good Friday service on April 2. Uh, the time will be announced later on. And of course, we will have our Easter Sunday service on April 4. And after that, we will be having our Easter egg hunt on April 4 also. Okay, so stay tuned for the announcement and details for these activities. Let us all rise up for our uh, Closing prayer and benediction. Father our God, truly as David had longed for you and thirst for you, O Lord, he only finds satisfaction on you and you alone. Father, help us, O Lord, to fix on you, to fix our eyes on Christ, who gave himself us and gave everything for all of us, O Lord, so that we can have life. All of those that surrounded us today can give us temporary satisfaction, but Christ alone can satisfy satisfy us completely. Father, help us to be faithful so that we can journey with you every day. And so as we long for you and we are satisfied, the more we want to possess you. Help us to possess Christ every day and long for his fellowship. Teach us, continue to Guide us and may the Holy Spirit allow us to see the truth and your teaching every day. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen and amen. God bless you all.